Hello, and welcome to another episode of Between Two Pints. I'm your host, Rob, and with me today is Daly. Glad to be back on uh, Imbibery and Bribery, where you get guests drunk and then use the footage against them. We've had some technical difficulties today. We, we did. We actually taped the intro of this once already, but one of the cameras actually failed in a way I have never seen in three years of filmmaking. And to make sure you're not shaken, I brought you a gift. It's some director's courage. Director's courage to help you get through this and to be your replacement beer. Established in 1787, it's a superior ale traditionally brewed to the director's standard. Director's courage. That's nice, Daly, because I got you a beer as well. Oh. St. Peter's English Ale. Actually, it's a beautiful bottle. That's pretty much the only reason I bought it. Mm-hmm. Also, it's organic, and I know you're really sensitive about those sort of things. I, you know, I try to do as best I can when I'm getting myself to get drunk in the basement. <laughs> Shall we? So today's episode is going to be a little bit different, folks. Today we're actually going to start the first step of a beer kit. The beer kit we're going to be doing is pretty simple. It's pretty easy. You guys can follow along at home. We're going to we're going to film each step, but it's a five week process. Join us on phase one. Cheers. This is I can taste the tradition of the brewery. <laughs> there you go. Let's take a little bit of time to talk about the brew kit we're going to do today. We, we, I bought us the cheapest brew kit possible because that's that's how much I care for you, Daily. It's not just the cheapest brew kit possible, it's because there are plans to modify it. And I've actually made this kit before, I made it last year. This is the Black Rock Miner Stout, it's about $20 at the brew supply place in Vancouver. All you need is about a kilogram kilogram of brewer's sugar, and some bottles, and sanitizing equipment. Sanitizing is a very important step, as you mentioned. It is, actually. Since you're doing basically a controlled chemistry experiment in your basement, and I found a really neat recipe for a vanilla whiskey stout, which actually made me think of Storm Brewing's vanilla whiskey stout. You mentioned they do have a very good one. We actually bought vanilla beans at the grocery store. I've, I've never bought them like this before. I've always bought the artificial vanilla extract. So later, we're actually going to pop this open and, cut, I don't know, I'll check what to do, but we're going to put in a little little container of rum, and that's going to sit for a week while our beer brews in our primary fermenter. And then when we move this over to our car, carboy next week, we're actually going to dump the rum and vanilla solution into the beer, and it's going to sit with that and mix over the two weeks that it sits in the prim, uh, secondary fermenter. There you go. And hopefully I'll still be uh, alive and around for every step of the process. You do live a dangerous and exciting life. I do. More to come on that if you subscribe to this channel and watch every episode. Well, let's go get this on the stove and start softening things, and then we can go sanitize the equipment, and we'll be good to go. Excellent. Step one. Thoroughly clean and sterilize all equipment. So we're taking our sanitizer here, and we're going to measure it out the only way Rob knows how. In gains. Get Rob a holster for this so he can cosplay his beer. Just so they know. Alright, I'm gonna go rinse that out. But it says no rinse. Yeah, fuck that shit. It's important you make your own rules when making beer. See, I have a very important relationship with ales and stouts. It all started back when I did a Guinness commercial. I jumped off the cliffs of Moher and swam across the Atlantic Ocean to see an old mate and apologize to him with a perfectly poured pint of porter. Since then, well, imbibery and bribery have been dear to my heart. Let me put my dirty fingers in there and canceling out your sanitization. I hate you, Daly. Let's do it again! <laughs> Step two. Remove the plastic cap and yeast enclosed under the cap and put to one side. Step three. Stand this can in hot water for 10 minutes to soften contents. Step four. Dissolve contents of can and one kilogram of brewer sugar into two liters of hot water in your Optimus primary fermenter. Then add 17 liters of cold water Mix it thoroughly. I put the brew kit and some hot water on the stove for about 20 minutes. It's, it's nice and warm. Now I'm going to pop it open and pour it into our primary fermenter. What we're going to do when I get this can open eventually is we're going to dump the wort in here, some boiling water, and the sugar and stir it all up. I feel like they need to see this. It's because it's I bought the cheapest can opener in the world. And now I understand why there are $20 can openers. Mmm, the black tar. Oh wow, that really does look like black tar. Oh 
Oh, look at this stuff though. Give it a smell. Come on, Daly. Smell it. Smell my wart. Malty. We're gonna get some hot water and we're actually gonna boil it and pour it onto this to get the last bits of the wart out. The thing is, this stuff is so sticky and congealy that you really need to get it quite hot for it to pour smoothly. I'm pretty sure they just sold you a can of molasses. <laughs> so I'm just pouring some hot water in here to sort of help get the last of the delicious beer syrup. Okay, kids at home, don't try this kids at home because kids at home shouldn't be dealing with uh, liquor. A seven, 1.7 kilogram can of black rock malt extract can be used instead of liquid brewing sugar or sugar. But screw that because we brought our own bucket of sweet sugary goodness and we're gonna use it because like this, we're refined. We need one kilogram of Escobar, right? Yeah. Okay. That's a magical sugar bucket you have there. Oh, are we gonna have a kilogram? You know what? We're gonna for the purpose of this video. They don't need to see the scene, the <laughs> scene where we stop filming and drive around till two a.m. looking for sugar, <laughs> yeah. <I'm> just screaming. <laughs> One zero zero zero. Can't teach this. This is a this is a skill. It's on my resume. Seriously, hire me, please. Keep stirring. Yes, sir. You can keep reminiscing, but you have to stir. Step five. Add approximately 2.5 liters of either cold or hot water, as so to give the final temperature of between 18 and 28 degrees in the Celsius. And just that also helps with the, the sterility, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's also a great way to start. There you have it, folks. 23 liters, right up to the line. Yeah, right there. Okay. In our next step, we basically just want to let this sit for half an hour and acclimatize to room temperature. We're just going to throw a plastic bag over this and put it in the corner while we set up our vanilla beans and rum mixture. That's exactly what I did as a professional kidnapper. Show us what you would do. Bag over it in the corner? You wouldn't, like... No, I was I was actually honestly I was a lonely kidnapper, so I probably think I made some good friendships. So really? I, was, I was the one who got Stockholm syndrome. Oh, okay. Yeah. So why don't you throw that over in the corner carefully, and we'll start working on our rum and vanilla bean mixture. So we've got some fresh-ish, I don't know, vanilla beans from the local grocery store. I bought myself some lambs, black sheep, spiced rum. It's lovely. I like to drink it by itself. I'm getting fragrances of a rich. Flavorful spiced Caribbean rum. That stands on its own and doesn't need to have a clinically depressed man drinking it to tell you it's worth drinking. Uh, we're basically just going to cut up our vanilla bean and mix it with some rum. Ernest Hemingway wrote this, a short story that he said he could write a more emotionally moving and inquisitive story with six words and it was baby shoes for sale never use this is the same ernest hemingway who survived two consecutive plane crashes on consecutive days so basically he was highlander yep he uh would hunt sharks he would look for nazi u-boats he got in a car crash that made spinal and uh, brain fluid leak from his nose in preparation of our second big phase of beer brewing for brewing our minor stout kit we've added vanilla beans to rum and that's going to soak for about a week and hopefully make it a delicious vanilla rum maybe we want to add a little more in here because we're totally going to want to drink this yeah the secret ingredient is love physically he puts love in every bottle no, don't it, drink it it's just msg oh. that's why it tastes better Step six, sprinkle yeast over liquid surface and place lid on fermenter. And we're just gonna sprinkle the yeast on top evenly. Doesn't really matter too much. And the big thing after this is you wanna cover it up and keep it somewhere that's gonna be at a nice room temperature and not fluctuate too much. You wanna keep it out of the sun. Step seven, let sit for five to seven days before moving to secondary fermenter. Well, thanks for joining us, folks. I'm Rob, and with me is Daly. We'll be getting together next week to finish what we started.
It's still like stink of vanilla. I'm covered in it. That's not a bad thing. I don't think you should use the word stink. You're right. I smell of vanilla. There you go. I should just I should just use vanilla beans as like cologne or cologne as the French call it. First off, it's it's a city in Germany or Bonn, but you know what? it's your show. I'm gonna leave you to it. <laughs> nice chef's jacket, buddy. Hey, Mr. Nelson's wardrobe provided by Danny Bracken's clothing for boys. Alright, let's go put this away. I'm a beer chef. Waiting. We actually play board games and Dungeons and Dragons in this living room, so I like to think that the imagination and magic infuses the beer. There you go.